Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and well, once again, I'm going to be testing this microphone just to see if it's any good. Let me know in the comments what you think. Anyway, so as you can probably tell from the title of the video, we're talking about black holes once again. And it's sort of connected to some of the previous videos you can find in the description, because here we're talking about an actual physical observation from a very famous black hole, the one you see behind me, the M87 star, also known as Powehi, whose image was taken a few years back. And specifically, we have some new discoveries in regards to the incredibly powerful jet that this particular black hole generates. The jet, whose actual image you see right here, and that's approximately 6,000 light years in length, may be generating all of this energy through a very intriguing process involving the idea of ergosphere and involving the idea of stealing energy from the black hole itself. And more importantly, it's something that many scientists have been proposing we can one day use to generate energy if we can find a way to control black holes, which is, I guess, a big if. But check out that other video in the description that actually talks about these hypothetical ideas of primordial black holes as well. So in other words, all of this is kind of related. But let's talk about this in a little bit more detail and discuss why this study is also somewhat intriguing as well. Or the first is super quick reminder. So this is the galaxy known as Messier 87, M87. It's about 55 million light years away from us, and it's the most massive and the central object in what's known as the Virgo Cluster, a relatively large nearby cluster of many different galaxies, where M87 is the biggest, the most influential, and possesses the largest black hole within several hundred million light years away from us. A black hole that's approximately 6.5 billion solar masses or over a thousand times more massive than the black hole in the center of the Milky Way. And the way this black hole got so big is very likely through various gravitational collisions with much smaller galaxies, which we know happen here very likely quite a lot compared to the Milky Way. And so because this black hole is so massive, it actually becomes the easiest black hole we can technically image from planet Earth, mostly because it produces the largest shadow out there, and because here the things move really slow, and thus it's much easier to image everything using modern telescopes. But this is also an extremely bright radio source, and it's technically really bright in a lot of different frequencies. Because of the ridiculous power of this black hole, you can actually see this in different types of light. But particularly radio light, which is of course how most of these images are usually taken. And because of the overall size of the jet, and obviously because of the distance to us, it's one of the most studied jets out there. For example, we know that it contains various knots, which seem to represent unusual emissions away from the black hole, where for some unknown reasons, once in a while, a sudden emissions in various frequencies, including X-rays, increases by a huge amount for several years. These knots have been observed in various frequencies, and they seem to appear in various regions in the jet. On top of this, we also know that the jet seems to initiate various nova in various stars along the jet, or basically it makes certain stars suddenly form explosions a little bit more frequently. It's unknown why, but as you can find out from the video in the description, it seems to happen quite a lot. We also know that the total energy coming from here is absolutely ridiculous. At the minimum, it seems to be approximately 10 to the power of 44 ergs per second, which is equivalent to 250 million times solar luminosity. And that's at the minimum. During some of the more powerful emissions, it seems to outshine the entire Milky Way galaxy by billions and sometimes even trillions of times, with the energy reaching 10 to the power of 56 ergs per second. These are basically powers we usually expect from very, very powerful explosions or multiple supernova. And the obvious question here is, of course, what phenomenon is responsible for creating these ridiculously powerful emissions? What's really driving this? With the obvious answer being, duh, it's a black hole, Anton. It's the black hole doing this. But how, though? How does this all work? Because obviously, since this is a black hole, any matter falling into it should disappear and should not produce any energy. Yet something does, and something forms these powerful jets. And that's, of course, a question a lot of astronomers have been trying to answer for a very long time, by conducting physical observations of a lot of these jets around very powerful black holes. And one of the explanations was always in regards to the accretion disks. Here the idea was that maybe the magnetic fields inside the accretion disks start to entangle so much that when they snap, they manage to somehow 
divert all of this energy and all of these particles into two directions. Directions perpendicular to the disk and launched directly from the center of the disk itself. And so in this case, it's actually assumed that the jets are generated entirely through electromagnetic fields of the accretion disk and not the black hole at all. But obviously the black hole itself provides the gravitational pull that accelerates all of these particles, creating the accretion disk and thus creating the magnetic fields. But the original assumption was that the jets are entirely made by the accretion disk itself. Which naturally implies an enormous power inside these disks, because we are talking about energy that's more powerful than a supernova, here produced every single second. But this was just one of the potential explanations. The other explanation was a little bit more exciting, because here it actually relied on the ideas proposed by Roger Penrose and a few other scientists that basically tell us we can technically extract energy from a spinning black hole if somehow we find a way to enter the ergosphere of the black hole where the space-time itself spins and can actually accelerate things to ridiculous velocities. You can learn a little bit more about this in one of the videos that was recently posted, and it should be in the description below, but in a nutshell, it basically means that by entering this region, you can come out with more energy than you entered with, and you get this energy by stealing it from the spin of the black hole itself. And so here it actually requires a spinning black hole. But we know that M87 spins ridiculously fast, approximately 90% of the total limit. We also know that its spin interacts with the accretion disk, producing unusual wobbling effects, with the jet going back and forth every few years by as much as 10 degrees. And so here the spin of the black hole is ridiculously powerful. But is it also responsible for the jet itself? Well, this recent study you can find in a description used the technique known as polarimetry, which essentially measures the polarization of the black hole's jet, to discover something really intriguing, potentially confirming all of this. Here, first of all, they were able to show that the energy source for the launching mechanism seems to be extremely close to the black hole itself. And specifically, the energy close to the edge of the black hole seems to be flowing outwards, not falling in. In other words, showing us that something on the edge of the black hole is creating a lot of extra power. If all of this was coming from the accretion disk, we would be seeing this much, much farther away. And so here it's assumed that this is still a result of magnetic fields and magnetic lines, and is still the result of entangling and the magnetic release, which then produces all of these emissions. But what's different about this proposition is that all of these magnetic lines seem to be actually powered by the spin of the black hole and not necessarily the accretion disk. In other words, all of this hot plasma orbiting the black hole may not be the main culprit forming these powerful jets. And because here the scientists were able to observe very powerful energy coming from extremely close to the black hole itself, it actually implies that the magnetic fields here very likely go inside the ergosphere of this extremely powerful fast-spinning black hole, but then come out much, much, much stronger and very likely entangle with other powerful lines in the process. And here we even see all of this simulated by the scientists behind this paper, which basically shows us that this process seems to become more powerful and more extreme as the black hole spins faster and faster and faster, with these super powerful magnetic fields extracting the energy from the spin of the black hole, entangling with each other, slowing the black hole's rotation just a little bit, but then releasing all of this as super, super powerful jets. Or, I guess in more physical terms, this is technically the proof for super radiance, the extraction of energy from the spin of a super fast spinning black hole. Which of course once again proves that we can definitely use black holes as very powerful energy generators. Check out the video in the description if you want to learn more. And since this process is then responsible for basically powering entire galaxies, or even shutting down galaxies, essentially killing them in the process, trying to understand exactly how all of this works and where all of this energy is coming from is super important. And well, the conclusion here seems to be that it's coming from the spin of a very massive black hole. Intriguingly, the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy, Sagittarius A star, spins very fast as well, but it's just not as massive. Yet it spins much faster than the one in M87. And that potentially implies that, maybe just maybe, it never really got to produce these jets and to essentially lose all of this spinning energy, potentially explaining why the Milky Way galaxy is so different from many different galaxies out there. But that's of course just a hypothesis for now. 
Nevertheless, though, this is an exciting discovery and definitely something super important for a lot of researchers studying black holes. We'll definitely come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description that also features a supermassive black hole as one of the designs. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.